Welcome back. So we're digging into the markets to start this morning off and uh, a Wednesday. We're halfway through the trading week and we started the week on a roller coaster ride. Now we've kind of settled down a bit on the equity side with the Dow, NASDAQ, S&P overnight moving higher, crude up overnight. What about the grains in overnight trade? Let's go to corn. We've been watching pressure uh, in front of the opening here, September at 385 and a quarter. It's three and a half higher, three cents lower on the D's at 402 and a quarter. And we roll into soybeans, again, lower trade there, September, dime lower at 1004. And it's uh, about three and a half pennies off the, the session low. November, new crop at 1017, off nine and three quarters. Let's go look at wheat in overnight trade. We did see higher trade. September for Chicago up three at 546 and a quarter. D's at 569 and three quarters, up three and a quarter. Hard red winter wheat, higher as well. That front month up four at 565 and a half. And I want to look at July. That's next year's new crop. We'll start seeding that before long. 606 and a quarter, it's up two and a quarter. And finally, spring wheat in Minneapolis is four and a half higher on the September at 597. D's. 616 and three quarters up four and a half. Has the cotton market found a bottom yet? Well, maybe December and overnight at 6760, 10 ticks off the day's high, up 30. Let's roll into Brian Hoops. Brian is president, Midwest Market Solutions. And Brian, we're, we're again, looks like maybe calm water for a while, maybe, maybe calm water before the WASD on Monday. Good morning. Yeah, it certainly could be the case. You know, we've seen the last several mornings where corn has traded lower in the overnight only to find some buying interest and push higher during the session. So that's one thing I think the trade will be watching is if that uh, demand comes into the corn market and we can see higher prices once again, especially with wheat trying to move higher. Um, actually, U.S. soft red wheat is positioned where on a price standpoint, we could be competitive with the uh, world markets for this Egyptian wheat tender. I really don't think we will be much of a participant in that tender. It's likely to go to other sources, um, but wheat market is putting in a little premium as a result. Of course, you alluded to Monday's key reports, and that's what the trade really is going to be watching along with the weather. Now, in the Western Belt, it's been extremely hot here in the last week or so, uh, but by next week, if the forecast verifies, there's going to be a lot of rain in uh, some of those hot, dry areas, kind of cool things off and, and give us a much needed drink. Uh, we've seen conditions improve dramatically in the Eastern Belt, uh, Illinois, Indiana improvement over the last several weeks because of, of their weather conditions. So, um, you know, we're really not hurting anywhere, so to speak, in the Corn Belt. And it's just kind of a matter of how we finish the month of August in here. There's a return to warmer temperatures, but also above normal precip in that eight to 14 day forecast. So we still have outlooks anyway, that this weather is going to be beneficial, finish this crop off nicely. and that that's kind of reflective of what corn and soybeans are doing in the overnight, testing those old lows once again. Hey, Brian, that uh, when we get a crop report or we get a WASD, those are really lag measures in there. But if we see big numbers, could that uh, could that put some pressure into the market and cause some maybe panic selling on the way? Yeah, you know, certainly possible. You know, trade guesses going into this report have been released. And so we're looking for small yield increases in corn, like 1.2 bushels per acre yield and only half a bushel per acre in soybeans. Now, those are probably pretty conservative numbers and, and probably we'll see larger yield increases a little bit uh, later in subsequent reports. But adding to the volatility is NAS is going to incorporate the FSA's uh, acreage data survey into this report. So we may actually have more corn and soybean acres, may have less, and that's gonna to add to some volatility depending upon what those numbers say. So not only do we have to adjust yields, we have to adjust acreage numbers, total production will change, and of course demand is gonna be a component. But um, yeah, I don't think you know we're putting in our harvest lows at this point in time or any type of a, a summer low. I think eventually these lows that we're carving out 
will be taken out. It will fall and drift lower until we get into September, October harvest time frame and eventually put in our lows at that point. We usually reference the WASDE or World Ag Supply Demand Estimates report with row crops, but they also hit on livestock as well. So how about we hit on livestock in just a moment as Market Day Report continues after this. Welcome back to Market Day Report. We looked at overnight trade for the row crops. We don't trade livestock in overnight trade. So let's look at how live cattle closed out the session on Tuesday. And August live cattle, 42 higher, 181.97. The October most active, up a nickel at 179.05 and a buck off the day's high. Now, December and the rest of those deferreds were lower. And for feeder cattle, we were lower across the board. Lost a dollar on the August at $243 a hundredweight. September off 67 at 240.57, pretty much in the middle of the day's trading range. And hogs, are we starting to see maybe things turn there? Well, the market kind of indicated that yesterday. August hogs, 91.27, up 12. The October, 67 higher, 76.40. And D's at 68.95, up 35. Good time to bring back in the president of Midwest Market Solutions, Brian Hoops. And Brian, have we found the bottom yet for hogs? Well, the charts certainly indicate that we have. You know, that's the one market that has shown uh, some resiliency bouncing off of its uh, weekly chart support, breaking some uh, trend indicators that we're now starting to establish an uptrend in that market. Um, hog weights this morning also were released and they are down almost a full pound from last week. Now we're still 4.6 pounds heavier than a year ago, but the fact that at least we're bringing those uh, weights down and more in line with last year, that's certainly a positive. It takes less tonnage off of the marketplace. So good to see that in the hogs. We'll probably see some follow through buying uh, this morning. And I think we're gonna see a, a decent an opening, you know, 50, 75 higher in the cattle complex. A lot of times you can look at the bid ask, and of course they change right before the opening bell, but they're indicating a, a pretty strong opening here for the cattle market, probably looking at what's happening with the, with the stock market and the fact that that's recovering. Um, we had a real consolidation day yesterday, an inside trading session. That usually means that maybe we're done going down and we're going to start moving in another direction or maybe the opposite direction. And hopefully that is the case. We'll, we need to have some sort of at least a technical correction, uh, retracements after this big loss that we've seen over the last week in both the live and the feeder cattle. So, Brian, I'm, I'm glad you went there. It cut out at 102.31, and the hams really leading that charge lower down over five bucks, uh, according to, to USDA. And as we start heading into the holiday season, I guess the question will be, will we see some switching out of beef over to, uh, to pork? So I know that's, that's one we can continue to debate the rest of the week. So come back and see us soon. Again, yeah. it's the president of Midwest Market Solutions, Brian Hoops. Yeah, Brian, always a good contributor.